Hello everyone and welcome back to another one of my Mythic Mobs tutorials. Today we're going to be covering every mechanic that pretty much covers teleportation. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? I think it does. Now it might sound kind of simple realistically whenever I put it into terms like that. However, it, teleportation within Mythic Mobs is made up of four different main mechanics. You have teleport, force pull, teleport to, and teleport in. Now in my my mob file, I did decide to go ahead and write down a few notes that I will be more than happy to share with you all as you watch and for any of you who might end up downloading my tutorial pack whenever I update it. So before we get started, let's uh, let's go ahead and do the little intro, yeah? So if you haven't already hopped on over to my Discord, I highly recommend uh, doing so. There's a lot of good content going on in there. Lots of questions being asked. Uh, new videos get posted in there all the time with an at everyone tag that everybody loves. Sorry. And then, well, you know, just the general gist of it. Most of you are already in there and I appreciate those of you who are. So thank you very much. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on teleportation. First thing you're going to want to do, as always, you're going to want to set up your mob file. So I've got teleport mob right here. And here we have everything that I always use. Hooray. Pretty simple. I hope you I hope you all appreciate that I do that for you all. I do it for myself too. It just makes life easy. Anyway, here are the notes that I wrote down. Some of them might not make sense at first, um, such as, well, relative chords are gridlocked. And I don't know. I, I, we'll just explain it as we go on, yeah? So first we're gonna go ahead and play around with teleport. How do we utilize teleport? It sounds so easy, if I could type. Right, doesn't that seem easy enough? Well, you're wrong, because there's actually more to it than that and it works a little bit differently than you might think. So teleport, as written here, it teleports the caster to its target. So what you can do, there's a couple of different options here. You can do spread, and you can do spread, spread V. Spread V is how high up and down your mob will go, or your targets, whoever. And spread is just how far horizontally that it will go. One of these changes a little bit uh, on one of the future mechanics I'm going to be covering. I'll have to look before I get to that segment, but that's okay. So right now we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and do spread equals zero, spread v equals zero. At self on interact, we're gonna reload. M spawn teleport mob. Okay, so now when we right click, oop, I think he's still doing something else. Okay, so I realized we actually we need to use that target, not at self, because what he's targeting whenever right clicked is it's very true to the what it says if he's targeting at self he's going to teleport around himself if he's teleporting at target he's going to tell around, teleport around his target the fact that he's the one teleporting will not change because that's what the teleport mechanic is so if we reload now as you can see he's like teleporting as close to us as he can possibly get so now if we set the spread to maybe five let's go ahead and reload He's <clears throat> okay, so this must be the one that's that's different. So spread H, and then reload. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is the one that has spread H. This is a random amount a teleport or sorry a mob or whoever uses the ability can teleport around the actual spot. Right now it's set up to five meters away, which I think is five blocks. Either way, you can see the difference between how it was before and how it is now. Spread vertical or spread V, it's going to do exactly what you think it is. It's going to pick a random amount between 0 and 5. So if we reload now, as you can see, he's occasionally teleporting up into the air. Uh, okay, I guess he abandoned me. We're going to spawn another one. <clears throat> so yeah, as you can see, he's just kind of whoosh. Oh, yeah, okay, that's a problem. <laughs> Maybe that's where the last one went, too. They teleported underground. Keep in mind that is something that can happen. I don't think there's actually a way to stop this as of right now. Let me just woo all the way down the list. Teleport. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, there's no way to stop this one from happening. So be very careful using spread V. Uh, you can go underground. Unfortunately, this is very much a thing. Yeah. Anyway, next we're going to go ahead and move on to Force Pull. Force Pull actually has the exact same options here. This is the one that's different, actually. So if you do spread H, get rid of the H. There you go. You have Force Pull. At target, uninteract. <clears throat> if we were to use force pull at self, it would do exactly what this one did on at self. It would just keep causing our mob to teleport around himself. But since it's targeting us, let's just, uh, whoop, whoop. This is probably a bad, oop, uh oh. That's probably a bad example. <laughs> so, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's change, let's just turn the spread off. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So we're gonna reload, and as you can see, it's like teleporting me like into the mob. That's what teleport, um, or sorry, that's what force pull is. It pulls everyone or whatever it targets to the caster. Okay, now that we have that covered, let's go ahead and move on to teleport two. This is where it starts to become more location-based and it does get a little bit more specific. Teleport two, <clears throat> next. Here we can specify a location. Now you can do a very precise location, like, I don't know, 901, I guess, 487 at target. Or if you do at target, it's gonna teleport the target. If you do at self, it's gonna teleport themselves. That's entirely up to you. Now there is one thing I want to uh, let you guys know. You can do relative. However, this is where you're gonna see what I'm talking about when I say relative is gridlocked. So say if we do zero, four, we'll do that. We'll set it to three so they don't die immediately. Three, zero. Right now, it's going to teleport itself to the coordinates zero, three, and zero in the world until we add relative equals true. So if we go ahead and reload, What did I do wrong? Oh, we didn't add the uninteract, that's why. Interact, okay. So if we reload, yeah, there we go. So as you can see, he's just kind of jumping in place because he's teleporting up by three, and yeah, that's it. But this is where I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that the relative thing gets a little funky and why it's very important to memorize which teleport mechanic actually does what. Since we're still using teleport two, we are going to use this. We're gonna set this to five and we are going to reload. And as you can see, he is teleporting off into the sunset. That's a very coincidental fun, uh, fun little thing there, but that's just how it is. So if we set that to negative five, reload. No matter where he's looking, he is following the X axis. So as you can see, whenever I press F3, you can see that it says right here, facing west towards negative X, and that is where he is teleporting, is in the negative X direction. Same thing would happen if we decide to set it over here. If we set that to five and set this back to zero, and we reloaded, well, as you can see, now he is going towards positive Z while still teleporting up into the air. Very important to keep in mind, um, even if you use relative, it's going to go based on the coordinates of the Minecraft grid. You can also do diagonals if you so choose by, you know, doing like 5 and 3 and 5 or 5, 0, 5 even or whatever the case. Doesn't really matter. However, just keep in mind that teleport 2 is, as said, relative coordinates are gridlocked. Last mechanic we're going to cover is teleport in. Teleport in is the one that you might be wondering, well, how do we get it to go in a very specific direction? Well, this is exactly how. So if we do teleport in, we're gonna type vector here. Here we have three different axes. We have our X axis, our Y axis, and our Z axis, similar to up here. However, these ones are very specific to where the mob is facing. So say you wanted to do you want your mob to, let's see, where's positive X? Positive X is that way. So if you want your mob to go towards that direction, actually wait, no, this isn't right. 
Hold on. <laughs> okay. Let's re let's let's start over on that one, yeah? Okay, so your x-axis is entirely based on where your mob is facing. So if you're a designer or you've worked with 3D stuff, you know your x-axis is going to be your forward and backward. So me moving forward this way is my x-axis, uh, positive x. If I'm moving backwards, this is negative x. If I'm going side to side, this is z-axis. And as always, y is up and down. Just to kind of show you all further proof, we're going to start off with the easy one first. So we're going to do 0 to 0 at self on interact. Okay. So now, teleporting in place. Very cool. Now, if we were to set this to like maybe 3 and we reload, notice how he's jumping forward. Is he always going to do that? Cool part is, the answer is no, he will not always do that. He's going to teleport directly to where he is facing. Because instead of side to side, this means forward and backward. It's very, 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 very cool in my opinion. There's a lot of really neat stuff you can do with this, and it's very helpful for player-based items as well. Um, especially if you have like, I don't know, some sort of jumping uh, thing if you're like, yeah, I want to get up there, but how do I get up there? Well, good part is you have teleport in that can get you up there now. So if we were to set this to negative three, reload, he is now jumping backwards. And just to show you, we're going to set this back to zero. We're going to set this to three. Reload. Now he's jumping to his right. And if I set it to negative three, reload. He is now jumping to his left. This can affect players too, which is pretty cool. So if I do uh, at target and reload, he's going to kind of throw me over to his left side. It's pretty neat because it will put you directly left of him, like exactly left of where he's facing. And that's, I don't know, it's just a really cool thing to play around with. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do if you use crucible which is the mythic mobs item version of this plugin you can utilize this in very 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 cool ways for players you can make it maybe a double jump mechanic you can make it to where it teleports you kind of like a chessboard if you wanted i don't know the possibilities are actually endless and I, I just i think it's really cool i realize it might be a little bit redundant to have or not redundant it might be a little overbearing i guess at first to have four different teleport mechanics teleport force pull, teleport to, and teleport in. However, when you start to realize their uses and what they are used for exactly, that's when it'll actually start to get easier for you. A very important thing to keep in mind, and I'll even put a note in here for you all, is that these first two, teleport and tel uh, force pull, are used to teleport players. Uh, or not, sorry, not specific, they're used to teleport entities, but not to really specific locations. However, this other one are locational teleports. Let's go ahead and type this out. Entity based teleports. I can't type. Let's do entity based teleport locations and locational teleports. I hope this will I hope this won't confuse you all having this in here. However, in my mind it makes a lot of sense. So this teleports the caster. This teleports the target. This teleports either of them in a very specific location, and this teleports either of them uh, relative to where the caster is facing. I realize this is kind of complicated. The more I talk about it, the uh, worse it's probably starting to get. So I highly recommend playing around with these mechanics. They're very, very cool, very, very useful. Uh, just There's just so many things that you can do with them, especially there being four different main purposes for them. So if this inv video inspired you guys, make sure to give me a thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button. It would help me out greatly. Uh, the more you subscribe, the more of you are going to be able to see these videos and the more likely it is to show up on your YouTube homepage. Now, how exciting is that? So thank you all very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to see what you come up with in the future.